Back alongside Wendy Mater from T2Coaching.com, I'm Dave Erickson with EnduranceHour.com. Today we are going inside our Ironman 70.3 training plan for beginners. It's a 16-week program. Today we're going to detail the first two weeks for you. Wendy, how do you structure a 16-week program for athletes? So the way I structure 16 weeks is I break it down into four four-week blocks. Typically, um, in most of the programs, the first four weeks are preparation, skills, drills, building your endurance. And then we go into the second four weeks is adding that endurance, um, starting to do a little bit more intensity by the end of the second four-week block. And then that third week block is all about race specific intensity, in this case, race specific intensity and volume for a 70.3 distance. And then that final four week block leads into the peak and the taper. So it's not a four week taper, but the taper is within that four week block. And what we're doing today is very similar to how we structure our multimedia training plans. We do videos before every training block to set you up for success for that training period. Now with this one, uh, like most of our plans, we have a testing week to kick things off so people have a good baseline. How do you have this? We, we begin with Tuesday and a bike test. So I think testing is really important because it sets your baseline for creating your own training zones, whether you train by heart rate, pace, power, rate of perceived effort. It's always good to have some sort of assessment to, that you can re reference later on in the program when you repeat the test to see if the program's working for you if you've improved in the test. So on Tuesday, we start with a bike test. It's your pretty traditional 20-minute what's called functional threshold power test, but you could also use it with heart rate. And again, if you don't train with that type of technology, it's still a good baseline test for you to determine maybe how many miles you went in 20 minutes. How can someone use a heart rate versus power if they don't have a power meter right now to get this, uh, get their baseline? So you, you wear the heart rate monitor, you follow the details of the testing protocol, you get your average heart rate for that 20 minutes. And I refer to Joe Friel's training, um, heart rate training guide to set zones. I've done this since I've started training. Um, you know, I've been training for 25 years and I've always referenced Joe Friel's heart rate and power training guides. Is 16 weeks a, a pretty general format for beginner triathletes at this distance? Can s some people go maybe 20 weeks, some people go 12 weeks. 16 weeks, pretty much general? I think 16 weeks is a good happy medium. Mm -hmm. um, for someone who is, if someone's coming from off the couch, maybe they want to add an additional four weeks and make a 20 week program, or maybe just two weeks, 18 weeks. But um, I think 16 weeks is enough to hold um, your motivation to follow 16 weeks, sometimes longer than that and you're, you're, you burn out and it's just too much for you, but it's going to get you ready. And, it, and, and again, if you are coming off the couch, you can still get it done in 16 weeks, have the experience of the race, learn from it, and then maybe next time either go shorter or longer. It just really depends on the fitness level that you're starting the plan out. But the best thing about our programs is you're doing this baseline and you're still going to follow the level of intensity based on your current fitness, not mine. So we have those numbers and we encourage people in our programs to always keep a log, whether it's on train peaks or your own personal dry, a diary or an Excel sheet online, keep track of these because you want to reference these later to see your progress or the fact that you're not progressing, we want to figure out why. So right. Wednesday you have a swim test. So we start off with a bike test and then a swim test. Talk about this 40 minute swim test. Again, the swim test is, is basically a, a 1,000 or a 1K. If you're not up to that level, you know, maybe go whatever level you're up to, maybe it's a 500, maybe you can't swim, that's your baseline. So these are just gui uh, general guidelines and, and typical standard testing protocols that I like to use. But don't feel overwhelmed if you're not at quite at that level because a lot of people do participate in triathlon are usually weaker swimmers. So it's just something to... Um, see where you're at, get you in the water, test out your time for a 1K swim. And then that'll set what's called your T pace. And your T pace is your pace per 100. So for example, if you swim 1K in 20 minutes, divide that by 10, and your T pace is two minutes per 100. It's your, what I would say in the water, your zone four um, swimming pace. Okay. 
Uh, Thursday, uh, in addition to some stability and endurance strength workouts that you like to put into your programs, we have a run test here. Uh, this is a three mile test. You can do this indoors or outdoors. Um, it's best to do it like on a track because the track is flat, it's level, you know, um, or another three mile course before you go indoors on a treadmill because sometimes you can cheat on a treadmill and speed it up or not run as fast as you're capable of running by not being a little timid and not really quite sure what your pace is. So I always um, like athletes to try to do it at a track. Maybe your track's indoors or um, another three mile course that you can repeat and um, take that time or average heart rate for that three miles and then you can calculate your threshold pace per mile or your threshold heart rate. And within our programs, we offer lots of different links to videos. Some are exclusive, some are private videos, but we have uh, a foot placement, uh, how to lean forward in some of your running technique. And one thing we've talked about on the Endurance Hour podcast when it comes to treadmill running is that if you are gonna do this on a treadmill, you want to put your treadmill at a one and a half percent incline to simulate outdoor running at least if you go zero then you're just kind of like a hamster on a spinning wheel mm -hmm. yeah. exactly so when do you have here a saturday and sunday bike and run workout for the first week of training so typically most people do their endurance days their longer days on the weekends but not everyone has the same schedule and again the, the purpose of these workouts are to build your endurance keep that intensity level fairly light to, to moderate zone one and zone two based on your um, fitness test that you just completed and then again, again if, if I, I like to go by time because in an hour and 30 minutes someone may be riding 20 miles where another person may be riding 30 miles. So again, it's, it's, it's just based on your current level of fitness. And then the hour run, again, don't be intimidated. If you're not quite up to an hour, maybe you do a run walk, like a four minute run, one minute walk. Um, the idea is the intensity zone, not, not going out too hard for an hour at this level of the program, it's week one. Now, speaking of week one, this is something that almost everybody on Training Peaks has to reveal when they do their own promotion for their programs. You get to see week one for free. We're gonna give you week two here in this video. So this is a 16 week program. We showed you 16 weeks out. Let's show you 15 weeks out in detail. I don't know how many people do this, but we're gonna show you inside the program with this one. And Monday you have a 40 minute swimming workout. So again, a lot of people, I understand swim masters, a lot of people might not know how to swim. So uh, the idea is to swim on Monday, kind of a little bit what I would consider a recovery day from your weekend of volume. And um, because we're in that first phase, the first four week phase, it's skills and drills based. So um, I have a, a general warm up, 300 warm up with some drills to work on. Again, if, if you're not quite sure what drills you want to work on, you can always send us a free swim video for analysis. I would prefer to um, give you drills based on your current swim stroke than to give you generic drills that I give everyone else. Or, well, I don't give everyone else. I don't like to do that. Um, and then the main set, again, I, it's, it's a, about a 600 meter set that you can do once or twice in the specific workout I, I have it written down as twice but if you're not at that level then you can just do the main set once um, again depending on what level do the one set in zone two which is generally T, T pace plus 10 seconds so if you did if your T pace is two minutes add 10 seconds then you would keep that pace per hundred two minutes and 10 seconds and then do the second set faster at baby basically T pace plus five seconds and then with this workout and this program, you have some stability and endurance strength training after this workout. Right. You can do it um, right after the swim, before the swim, later in the day. And maybe you do your strength workouts on a different day of the week. It, you know, stability and strength, balance, um, core, uh, classes like Pilates or yoga, or maybe you do a um, belong to a health club and there's a specific um, core balance class that you like to take. There's a lot of options there. And um, we've created a lot of different optional strength training that you can do as well. Let's go a little bit deeper into uh, your coaching philo philosophy that you've developed over the last two decades of why it's important that you want people to have a good uh, core and you incorporate strength training in your uh, triathlon plans. Well, your core, you use it for everything. I, I mean, everything stems from um, 
the area between your shoulders and hips. It's not just your abdominal region. It's not just your lower back. It's your shoulders. It's your posture. It's your hips. And I mean, I learned the sport 25 years ago and I just was injured all the time. And because I didn't know how to train. I mean, 25 years ago, what were you doing 25 years ago? You know, so it, I, it, once I, once it wasn't till like 2010, 2009, 2010, that I'm like, what am I missing? What, what am I missing in my program? Why do I keep getting injured? And what I was missing was a good core functional strength training program. So the way I like to develop it in, in, in a triathlon plan is again, when you're in the stability endurance phase, I have certain stability endurance, um, balance movements that I like to do. And then once you kind of get that stability, um, engagement, then you move on to more of a maximum strength phase, which involves a different amount of sets, a different amount of reps and different movements. But you could do stability and core, you know, 300 and however many days in a year, 365 days a year and be OK, because that's the foundation and that's what it's all about. Let's talk about uh, Tuesday's 60 minute uh, bike workout, which involves cadence drills. And I like how you really have this structured out. And this is, a, you know, kind of a good idea of what you do in the future bike workouts. And you have definitions below of, you know, revolutions per minute, right leg only, left leg only, rate of perceived exertion. You have a 60 minute workout, probably on a trainer or a spin class. Talk about this one. So again, because we're in the preparation phase, um, skills and drills not only apply to swimming, but they do apply to cycling and running as well. So um, pretty common drills are one-legged drills where you unclip with one pedal and you just pedal one leg at a time. Um, typically, people are going to notice what's called a dead spot in their cycling stroke when they're pedaling one leg at a time. And again, I have, there's four phases of the pedal stroke. I link an article that you can read more about that. And then cadence drills. I know when I started um, as a triathlete on a bike, I would just grind, what's called grinding. I would be in just too big of a gear and my legs would fatigue because I didn't know how to spin. I didn't know how to pedal. So once I learned how to do cadence drills and I got more familiar with a certain cadence, what that meant for my effort or heart rate back then, it really made, started to make sense with me when people were telling me to pedal in circles and really what that meant because I was working on my skills and drills. So I think it's just a really important component um, to develop efficiency on the bike. Okay. Uh, moving on, because all the details are right there, moving on to Wednesday's uh, week two here, a 1,500-yard swim or basically a mile, uh, again, by yourself or with a master's group. And you always have like a, a little warm up, loosen up just to get things going. And is that always a freestyle? Can you do some backstroke? Can you do a little bit of breaststroke? Does it oh, you can do anything. It's yeah. just, get, it's really just to get wet and get warm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I like to do. It may take me a hundred to get wet and get warm. It may take me longer, but, um, oh, I, I always like to include, um, backstroke, stretch out my shoulders, breaststroke. It, it loosens up my hips and my adductors and abductors. And then um, butterfly, I just because I used to do a lot of butterflies in age group swimmer, um, gets my heart rate up. So it kind of gets me ready for the main set. I also always include drills within my warm up. Um, the basic main drills are working on recovery, hand entry, and underwater catch and pull. So I do include um, those types of drills to work on, kind of following that get wet type of warm up. Mm -hmm. And then the main set is pretty similar um, to the other main set where I do a ladder. Again, you can repeat the ladder once, twice, four times. It just depends on where you're at. As a, If you're a swimmer and you want to swim longer, just repeat the main set multiple times. And the emphasis on doing the drills correctly, but not necessarily fast. It's for, totally form focused. It's not meant to be fast. Mm -hmm. Over time, the more skills and drills you do, the idea is to incorporate um, the focus of the drill into the main set. So if you're going to work on high elbow recovery with fingertip and thumb slide drill, well, then you want to be mindful of maintaining that high elbow recovery while you're swimming. And, and again, the combination of, of technique, endurance, strength, and speed all together in a, in a training program package like we've developed in the end, that will make you stronger and faster. And below this one, we have another uh, dry land training for some stability and endurance for 45 minutes. And I think we've talked about this in some of our programs is that what do you drop first if you're tight on time? Um, you know, we have talked about this in some of our programs. I think before you drop anything, you just make things shorter. Mm. If you have 10 minutes 
to do some strength. Do some push-ups, something, do some push-ups, some planks, some wall sits, and, and you're good to go. You know, you're kind of hitting the, the quads, the core, the, the chest. Um, I would rather have people shorten a workout rather than completely cut something out. Excellent advice. Thursday, we're running again, three to five miles, depending on your, your experience and skill level and endurance level at the moment. So uh, talk about this one here with a warm-up of a 10-minute walk or jog. So again, the warm up is to keep your intensity level zone one and two. Some people may be, you know, walking it depending on their level of fitness. Some people may be running it. The idea is to get your blood flowing and not to start off too fast too soon, especially with running, you'll probably pull a muscle. Um, and then during the main set, um, I have some um, additional, you know, th six times 30 second accelerations. What an acceleration is, is you start slow and you build your speed over 30 seconds. So it's not quite a sprint yet. The idea is to think about your running form, think about your, your leg turnover, your leg cadence. You want to increase that over the course of 30 seconds. Then you recover, you do it again, recover, do it again at any points during the run that you want to do it. And it also just helps, um, keep it a little bit more active and vibrant and you're not just running for 15 minutes you're actually doing something within that 15 minutes it's not quite an interval but it's something to be mindful and, and focused on and in this you say run three to five miles with added skills and drills uh that is not that's not including these accelerations is that like you know butt kicks or high knees what do you mean by skills and drills exactly so we introduced some skills and drill videos in the first week so you want to keep active and, and again just like in swimming i add drills in the swimming warm-up you should be doing these drills in your running warm-up as well okay and then fridays are the days off for this particular plan and then like you have structured weekends or generally speaking the days that most of us have the most time available because we right. usually work monday through friday so you've got about a, just under a two-hour bike ride on saturday for this uh, second week of training Right. So it's 15 minutes longer than last week. I think that's one thing I really like about how we develop these 12 to 16 week plans that we have is they're very progressive with volume as well as intensity over the course of the plan. And so we're just adding a little bit longer. So if you rode two hours last weekend, maybe you want to ride two hours and 15 minutes this weekend. If you only rode an hour last weekend, maybe you should just ride an hour and 15 minutes this weekend. So it's, it's just 15 minutes on top of what you did last week for the most part. And then Sunday is you have the runs an hour and 10 minutes long. And remember that sun, the following Monday is probably going to be a swim as a right. recovery workout. So that's why you're going to have some, you know, big training volume here. So an hour and 10 minutes of running. Yeah. So I just added 10 minutes from, um, the previous week's run. Again, if you're someone who only ran 30 minutes, that's the, only, that's the amount of time you're your your fitness level is is indicating that you should run this week keep it at 40 minutes i think that's a really important point that people need to understand how to progress based on where they're starting from mm -hmm. you know it's silly to say i can only run 30 minutes but the plan calls for an hour and 10 minutes you know that doesn't mean you're not going to complete the race it just means you need to progress incrementally based on your fitness mm -hmm. and by the way for this plan in particular the 70.3 training plan for beginners this has a video before every single training week. So you're going to get some really detailed coaching that you won't see on these other plans out there that just have some variations and adjust here and adjust there. Like we're doing now is what we do before every week of training on this plan. Right. So every, every Monday, you're going to see a video and we're going to explain the next week's worth of workouts, just like we just did for the first two weeks. If this, uh, this sneak peek into our 16-week program is of any interest to you, uh, you can check out the links below to uh, order the entire 16-week program for yourself. You can get it in PDF form. You can also get it on Training Peaks. So you can just download it onto your Training Peaks account, which is free, which means you can take it with you wherever you go. I love that, that mobile option. And there's a lot of bonus links in here as well. I mean, we've got some... Uh, bonus sports medicine and injury prevention video interviews that I've done with uh, this local chiropractor, which is very helpful for lower back pain issues, uh, fixing swimmers, shoulder injuries, massage therapy, and so much more. So it's, it goes beyond just your 16 weeks of training. There's a lot of extra value in this. Right. And I think just to add to the extra value, nutrition, race day tips, 
You know, we take you through the the last week is really the the bulk of the taper week, and we we talk about race preparation um, and other things that because you're a beginner, you might not know. Mm -hmm. Even key workouts. You know, I I mentioned this a few moments ago. If you're short on time, what do you cut out? And you said, well, just make those workouts shorter. There are key workouts that you don't want to miss that we talk about as well. Like, Mm -hmm. hey, this is an important week. We're into a very important build week here or whatever it may be. Don't miss this one if you can help it. Right. And yeah. usually it has to do, usually it's that race specific intensity workout that you don't want to miss. And that's usually a workout that people might want to miss because it's a little bit more intense. So it's a little bit harder. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you're like me, when I started, I would miss that one and do the easier ones. Makes sense. Uh, thank you so much. Again, the links are below this video and, uh, check us out on a weekly basis on, on iTunes, the endurance hour podcast, Wendy and I, uh, we'll give away much more information on a regular basis. You can also leave us a voicemail if you have a specific coaching question about, you know, swimming, biking, running, triathlon, nutrition. Uh, gosh, Wendy, what don't you know that we could talk about? Um, <laughs> ask me. Try to stump me. There you go. 25 years into the sport. Um, I've been there, done that. I know. I can relate. Yeah, stump Wendy. Good luck with that. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found some value out of this. Uh, We'll hope to see you sometime soon or hear you sometime soon with your voicemail and uh, see you on the podcast. Thanks for watching.